Up, please. <laughs> I said up. Uh, I I'm going up. Would you care to join me? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Mr. William, you here? Yeah, I'm here. When are you gonna arrive? Oh, I'm sorry, I was reading this book. What? Shakespeare? <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet? Oh, Dad, it's a beautiful love story. Just listen to what they say in that thing. But it's all! What light on their window going to break? That is the ye, and Julia is the sun. <laughs> yeah. No, wait a minute. That's not as good as what she said. She goes up on the balcony, and she talks down, and she says, Ronio, Ronio, whip around you, Ronio. <laughs> Deny your father and refuse thy name. Oh, if thou will not, be but declare my love, and I won't ever be a capole. <laughs> a Capole? That's your name, Julia Capole. Oh. <laughs> when did you get interested in Romeo and Julia? That's the story of my life. What? I'm in love. You're in love? With a girl. <laughs> Do I know her? No, you don't know her. I don't know her either. <laughs> What I do know is that she's the baby nurse up on the 12th floor. Well, why don't you go to the 12th floor and go to but the... But it's all! What's the matter? Here comes Julia. If it isn't the lovesick astronaut. <laughs> What's the big idea? Why'd you close the door on my face? That's why I came up here to, to explain to you why I closed the door in your face. All right, why? Because I didn't want you in my elevator. <laughs> oh, for a while there, I thought you didn't have a good reason. <laughs> You got to understand, that's the only chance I got to be alone with her. It's, it's our moment. Well, isn't that sweet? Isn't that a sweet? <laughs> you got to understand that that's the only moment I got to be alone. It's, it's just that precious moment that I have. And then we get up to the 12th floor and I got to let her out and my whole world just crumbles. I hate the 12th floor. <laughs> there, there, Jose. Well, okay, I, I forgive you. I, I can understand why you'd want to be alone with her. Mr. Williams. Of course, you're, you're entitled to be alone and to talk to the girl you love. Oh, I never talk to her. You don't talk to her. Why not? Well, if you talk like I talk, would you talk? <laughs> Jose, you, you, you mustn't run yourself down like that. You speak very well. Your speech is just fine. Well, that's very nice of you to say, but... I, Something you ought to know. What's that? I got an accent. <laughs> so what if you've got an accent? It's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, Mr. William, but I, I, I really know that if I open my mouth, I'm going to lose her. Well, how are you going to get anywhere with her if you don't talk? I get by on my looks. <laughs> that might be all right for a starter, Jose, but you know what you're going to have to do? You're gonna have to find some way to communicate with her. Oh, well, I wrote her a letter. Did you get an answer? No. Oh. I didn't mail it. <laughs> you didn't mail it? Why not? Well, it may sound silly, but I just couldn't stand to have my letter in with all those other letters crushed in with bills and everything. <laughs> this letter is too good to mail. Well, don't, don't get so carried away. You couldn't mail her anyway. You don't even know her name. You don't know her name? Well, I, I know her zone number. <laughs> Who is she? She's the baby nurse up on the 12th floor. Well, if you know her apartment, you could slip the note under the door. That's a good idea. How are you going to write to the girl? What are you going to say? Dear, what's your name? 
No, Mr. William, you can't write a love letter like that. I should think you got, not. You got to do what I said. Dear you know who. <laughs> Every time I see you in my elevator, I say, but it's all. Juliet is in my elevator. <laughs> you are so beautiful. When you smile, your teeth are white and shiny like the buttons on a new elevator. <laughs> Without the number. <laughs> I have never said this to another woman. You're truly me. <laughs> P.S. Me is the elevator operator. <laughs> Romeo. What do you think of my love letter? Well, Jose... You uh... think it's too passionate? <laughs> No, no, that's that's not your problem, Jose. There's a problem? I'm afraid there is. You're, uh, well, let's say that you just don't have a talent for romantic phrasing. Mm. Mm. Darling, why don't you help him out? What? You know, Mr. Williams used to write beautiful love letters to me. Okay. Honest, he did. You know, lovely things like, if the sea were a pool of ink and the sky were a parchment, I still could not write the full story of your grace and beauty. Mr. Williams wrote that? He certainly did. Oh, Mr. Williams, maybe you could write my letter. Oh, no, Jose. Uh, a love letter is a very personal thing. That's something that you're going to have to do yourself. Well, Mr. Williams, my heart is full of words of love, and I want her to understand them. Oh, well, Jose, if your heart is so full of words of love, just tell them to her. When they're in my heart, they're fine, but when they come out my mouth, even I don't understand them. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, 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 I couldn't do it. Oh, Mr. Williams, please, you've got to do Nothing it. Nothing to it. Oh, come on, Danny. Couldn't you write just one for him, just to get him started? Please, Mr. Williams. Oh, come Williams. on, Kathy, I don't want to get involved oh, in this thing. No. Please. No, absolutely not. Oh, Mrs. Williams, please. He's right. There's no reason in the world why you should have to help out a, a poor nobody like me. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. All right. Very, very much. You're Mr. welcome. Williams. You're a very kind, nice yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, very kind. Look, I'll have it for you later this afternoon. Did Mr. Williams really <clears throat> write that about the sea being ink and the sky a parchment of paper? He really did. Oh, Mr. Williams, you're lucky to have such nice thoughts. You know what they say? They say, when somebody has beautiful thoughts on the inside, that it shines through and makes them all beautiful on the outside. <laughs> I guess it doesn't work all the time. Hello, Linda. Linda. Is your wonderful daddy home? Yeah, just one second. Come on. Okay, thank you. Daddy, Mr. Jose's here to see you. Hey, be down in a second. Okay. Linda? Guess what? What? I'm in love. Well, that's nice. Have you ever been in love? No, you don't have time for it when you're in the brownies. <laughs> that's too bad, because it's a wonderful feeling. It is? Oh, yes. You just, your knees start to shake, you know, and your heart beats fast, and you lose your appetite, and you feel hot and cold all over, all at the same time. I felt like that once. You did? Yeah, when I had chicken pox. <laughs> Young lady. Your mother's waiting for you. She's double parked. Come on, get going. Okay. I hope you feel better. Thank you, Linda. What's the matter? Are you sick? Yes, Mr. Williams, I love sick. I love the whole world, but I especially love you. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, Mr. Williams, your letter was wonderful. It, it brought such big success. Look, she answered me. Smell, kid. Yes. Smell. Baby Talcon. <laughs> yeah. Glad to see you got results, but I'm not surprised. I really put it on pretty thick for you. Mr. William, uh, should I answer it right away? Oh, certainly. Once you get the fire lit, you know, you got to keep fanning it. Mm, that's what I thought, too. Uh, what are you going to write in the next letter? <laughs> I'm not going to write anything in the next letter. You asked me to write one letter, and I did that. But you did such a good job. Why should I fire you? <laughs> Jose... I didn't ask to be hired, so you can't fire me. From now on, you're in business for yourself. Oh, Mr. Williams, you, you got to help me. I even write with an accent. 
I'm sorry. Please, if you don't help me, I'll be ruined. What do you mean, ruined? You got results. She answered you. You're doing fine. Oh, it's a beautiful letter, but the, there's something about it that worries me. What? What worries you? She says, I'm eagerly anticipating our next encounter. <laughs> so what are you worried about? I don't know what that means. <laughs> It means she's anxious to see you again. Oh. That's very nice. Now, when you see her again, you'll talk to her and everything will be fine. Oh, no, Mr. Williams, I can't talk to her. I can't talk to her oh. yet. Look, you can't expect me to keep writing love letters for the rest of your life. Mr. Williams, of course I don't expect you to keep writing love letters the rest of my life. Well, all right. Just until we're married. Oh, Zach. <laughs> Look, I'm a busy man. I've got a script to learn, 43 pages. I've got to commit it to memory. Now, will you please leave me alone? I understand, Mr. Williams. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right, Mr. Williams. I'm going to leave you alone because there's no reason why a big man like you should help out just a poor elevator operator. <laughs> Jose, don't you understand? I've just got so much to do, and I can't get involved in this thing with you. I do understand, Mr. Williams. I understand perfectly. I'm just going to have to get out of her life, that's all. I'll just arrange it so she'll never see me again. As a matter of fact, I'll arrange it so nobody ever sees me again. Jose, what are you going to do? I'm going to transfer to the freight elevator. <laughs> come back, come back. Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, boy, how I let you do it to me every time. All right, all right. Mr. Williams, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You mean I don't want to, but I have to. <laughs> Here we go again. Dear Miss You-Know-Who. Oh, no, no, you, you can use a regular name. She signed the letter? Your faithful passenger. Isn't that a beautiful name? Oh. <laughs> about this. A what? About this in my writing tablet. Beloved, always I dream of your beautiful hair, like strands of silk over your lovely eyes, which lie like twin seas, sparkling midst the snowy fields of your dazzling complexion. I did that, son. That's just a rough draft of a letter I was writing for Jose to send to his girl. Oh, I thought it was somebody writing to me. <laughs> uh, now, how could you ever believe anybody would write something like that to you? Well, I mean, beautiful hair, eyes like twin seas, dazzling complexion. Let's face it, it fits. <laughs> Answer the door. Hi, Jose. Oh, it's a happy day, Mr. William. That all depends, Mr. Jose. <laughs> It'll be a happy day for you. It is? Yes, you don't have to write any more love letters for me. Then it's a happy day. Yeah. I found a different way to communicate with her. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sing to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to sing to her? Yeah, on, on the tape recorder. I thought you didn't want her to hear your accent. Well, that's the wonderful thing. What? When I sing, I don't have an accent. No, kid. You couldn't tell me apart from Pericono. <laughs> well, you won't have to write any more love letters for me. Well, that's very nice. You just have to be my musical director. <laughs> now, Jose, I've Come got on. to learn my Mr. script. Mr. William, just take a very few minutes. I'll set this up here. I'll be out of your way in no time. All right, Jose. All right. Well, June and January. It's a very lovely song. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is home in Honduras when you are in love. When you are in love, my dear, it's really very nice. Is home in Honduras. You, you, uh, in Honduras. You don't have an accent when you sing? Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's certainly marvelous. But uh, your accent isn't what's disturbing me right now, Jose. Oh. Uh, you see, uh, 
June and January is a very delicate love song. Right. And it's not for amateurs to just, uh, you know, throw away. I, I, I don't want to insult you or anything, but a song like this should be sung by a real singer. You're right. I see, do I know any real singer? You see, I, I don't know Dean Martin. I don't know Frank Sinatra. I do know Danny Williams. I don't know Tony Bennett. Wait a minute, I went by somebody I know. <laughs> yeah, well, just keep going by, because she's not home. Oh, please, Mr. Williams. No! You really got to help me. No, I will not. Just this one time. Now, Jose, I, I've done as much as I'm going to do for you. That's it. That's the end. I wrote the love letters for you, and that's as far as it goes. I've got a script to learn. I've got no time to waste on you. So our association has ended. As of now, finished. Done. Kaput. Understand? You want to think it over? No! <laughs> You're very right, Mr. William. I've got to learn to stand on my own two feet. I'm going to sing that song myself, and I won't even ask you to accompany me on the piano. I'm going to sing it myself. It honey, how you worry when you are in love. When you are in love, my dear, it's really very nice. It honey, in love. You talked me into it. I'll sing it for you. I'll sing a song for your girl that I used to sing to my girl. The more I see you, the more I want you. Somehow this feeling just grows and grows with every sigh. I become more mad about you, so lost without you, and so it goes. Can you imagine how much I love you? The more I see you, as you. Goodbye. I know the only one for me can only be you. My arms won't free you. My heart won't. Why are you crying? I can't help it. I sound so beautiful. <laughs> no, well, we all dressed up. So am I. <laughs> well, what's the occasion? The Williams, I just had to tell you that your song did a wonderful job. Did do work, huh? Oh, well, I'll say it did. She sent me a letter, and she said, we must meet. So tonight, we must meet it. No. Yeah. Did you hear that, huh? Jose is going to go out with his lady love tonight. Oh, how wonderful your first date. Yeah, but it could be our last day. Oh, now, Jose, you must think positive. You'll have a wonderful time. Where are you going to take her? Well, I got to take her someplace nice. Well, the Sammy Jacobs restaurant right around the corner. Why don't you take her there? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think, I think I got an idea. See what you think of this. What if I bring her here? <laughs> what if I throw you out on your ear? I think I like my idea better. <laughs> well, I don't. But look, I wrote the letters for you. I sang a song for you. Now, if you think I'm gonna let you use our house for a lover's lane, you got another thing coming. Oh. Yeah. Now, look, Kathy, I believe in friendly relationship with Latin Americans, but this has gone too far. 
Honey, what harm is it if he meets his girl in our apartment? Miss Williams, Mrs. Williams, please. He's right. There's, there's no reason why he should do something nice for a poor, friendless foreigner like me. <laughs> You're not gonna do it to me again. <laughs> now, be reasonable, Jose. It's your first date with a girl. Why do you want to bring her to our house? Take her somewhere. You can be alone with her. Why bring her here? Well, I just want you to back me up when I tell her the truth. The truth? Yes, that it was you that wrote the letters, and it was you that signed the song. Well, what do you want to tell her that for? Well, she's such a lovely girl, I just can't deceive her anymore. I got to tell her the truth, even though I lose her. I got to be a man. And that's why I wanted to meet her here. <laughs> He's done it to me again. <laughs> Jose, when would you like to meet her? Would uh, 8 o'clock tonight be all right? Oh, 8 o'clock would be perfect. Good. Good. Only 6 o'clock would be better. 6 o'clock? Why? Well, because that's the time I told her to be here. <laughs> 6 o'clock now? No, she's going to be here in a while, and I'm just going to stand up to her like a man. Tell her to go away. <laughs> Silly, I can't tell her to go away. Oh, oh come on. Get a hold of yourself. Oh. Yeah, come in, come in, my dear. So glad that you could come. I, uh, we're very happy that you, uh, uh discovered, uh, each other. Just, well, we're just happy that we could be a party to this very sweet little, uh, project. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> Now. Ole. <laughs> uh, Arriba. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Uh, look, uh, young lady. Now, you should be highly complimented. My friend here is afraid to open his mouth in your presence. He's afraid to talk to you. Hey, this boy here who had the courage to come to our country, a stranger, a foreigner, who, who fought language and custom barriers, who worked hard not only to support himself, but to send his younger brother through college. This boy who had this courage is frightened in your presence, afraid to speak for fear he might lose you. He, he has a little accent, and that's what's disturbing him. And well, I, I, I wrote those letters to you, and I sang the song on the... Yes, please let me finish. I... The words and the sound were mine, but the thought and the feeling was his. I was only trying to project what was in his heart. And if I can read those pretty little eyes of yours, I'm sure you'd like to stop hearing the second hand and get it straight from him. Arriba, kid. <laughs> I mean, uh, t tell her your name. My name, Jose Jimena. <laughs> and that's how I talk. You talk a better English than what I am. <laughs> My name, Hilda Schmetterling. <laughs> <laughs>